Welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Bundles and today's video is a hair business video. I'm going to be answering a question that I received. So if you've been following this channel, you know I have a few different websites. If you want to inquire about hair uh, business topics or um, how to start your hair business, you can honestly get in touch with me on either website. Um, a lot of people think they have to go directly to the Bad Chick Hair, which is my hair business website, to submit their questions um, via like a uh, chat. But you can also go in, um, go to keepingupwithbrittany.com and you can submit general business questions or hair business questions there as well. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get right into this question. I'm going to keep the um, email address and the name of the person that sent the question anonymous like I always do. Um, I also am going to paraphrase the email um, because it was a lot longer. I did reply directly to the email. So if you are the one that sent this, be sure to check your inbox and check your junk and spam folders too because sometimes the email goes there. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Please make sure that you are subscribed. Giving the video a thumbs up, it lets me know if you want to see more videos like this. It's really important because I, I want to make sure that I'm creating content that you all want to see. So um, if I don't get as many likes, it's it's just kind of indicating who's really interested in this kind of video on this channel and who's not. So if you are coming here for hair business related content, I do need your uh, participation if I if I if I can. Uh, you know, just go ahead and like the video or leave a comment. Just let me know that you're interested so that I uh, get a gauge for who all is here for hair business related information still. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So the email is, I sell hair and it's going okay, but I feel like I should sell more hair. I've tried selling lashes and clothes before and those did not bring a big enough profit. Any input on what you think I should sell? So um, just to, to elaborate a little bit more, um, during the email, she also mentioned she gave specific numbers of how much she's selling, um, like an average of how much she sells each month for hair. And she does make a good amount uh, selling hair each month. Um, however, there's always room for improvement. There's always room to earn more, right? So she has uh, tried to sell a few different things before, um, like I went over lashes and clothes. Um, she said she had a boutique before and the boutique had lashes, clothes and some other items. I forget right now um, off the top of my head, but the, the boutique had some um, other items items as well and it just didn't bring enough profit for her to stay interested in doing what she was doing um, or for her to keep the expenses for the business uh, afloat with the profit that she was receiving so she decided to not do the boutique and just sell hair at this point she's wondering is there anything else that i would recommend she pair with her hair to increase her revenue so um, i'm going to go ahead and go with the first point that i have jotted down so the first point is if you're going to stick to hair I recommend selling products to complement the hair you sell, like shampoos, conditioners, bonnets, etc. There are a lot of people that I work with via business consultation. Some people reach out via email or text. Um, some people leave comments. Some people I um, have in my mentoring program as my mentees. And some people just ask, you know, I've, I've gotten asked this question a lot of times through various outlets. Uh, what else should I sell? If you are wanting to sell um, something in uh, relation to what you're doing, then I would, number one, recommend you finding a product that's relatable or complementary to the product that you're offering. So like I say, if you're selling hair extensions, shampoos, conditioners, um, back in the day, we used to sell, uh, or a lot of different hair companies, me included, uh, used to sell weft sealant. Um, some people also um, would sell different, um, clips to make clip-ins. I mean, just, you know, figuring out what your clients would, would enjoy and also what you would enjoy selling with your, uh, hair products. What makes sense? Some people sell wig brushes. I mean, it just depends on what makes sense for you. Um, if you are looking at creating your own like um, shampoo or conditioner line. They have white label products or companies, excuse me, out there where you can create your own um, 
products or you have products that are already created for you and the company lists like what products go into the conditioner and the shampoos and you can even buy uh, samples and testers and figure out which conditioners and shampoo you want to sell to your customers and um, you can go ahead and create a label with your logo and your business name and put that information right around the bottles and so a lot of companies do that as well the reason that I'm saying you may want to stick with um, products that are uh, complementary to what you're selling is because if you're doing well selling what you are, you know, selling hair and you've already tried some other outlets to sell different products, my recommendation would be to first go to what complements. So I'm selling my hair, but what can I sell in addition? It's going to be easier to sell to an audience something that you can pair with a product that's already very sought after and, um, very popular with your brand. Okay, that's like if I have a um, bake baking business and we specialize in selling a certain cookie, okay, it would be beneficial for me to also look into doing maybe a brownie that complements the cookie or a cookie cake or something like that, you know, instead of me saying, hmm, I have a banky, baking business and we are, uh, we specialize in this cookie, but I'm going to go ahead and now bring in sandwiches. Now, would some people buy sandwiches? Yes. But is that along the same line as far as my bakery treats or the um, popular cookie type that I'm selling? No. So it may be a little bit more challenging on the marketing aspect for me to attract people that are interested in sandwiches and cookies or interested in sandwiches instead of me going along the lines of, okay, well, a lot of customers are already coming to me for this specialized cookie. I would more than likely get more sales if I added a brownie with it or if I did tea and cookies or something that complements them, if that makes sense. Okay. So um, that would be my first tip. The second thing that I want to go over is if your hair sales are going well, have you considered sharing your experiences and takeaways in the form of an ebook? So I just went over some products that you could pair with your hair sales um, or hair products, excuse me, to get more sales. Also, I think a lot of entrepreneurs overlook the service type of their or the service portion of their business. And I, I did too. I'm not going to say that I, I didn't, but when COVID hit, um, it really forced me to start thinking outside of just my products primarily. And I needed to look into other ways to generate income and take those ways just as serious as I took um, my products, my product sales. So creating a service around your business is always going to be beneficial because if something happens with your vendor, if something happens with shipping, um, if something happens where you're not able to get to your product, let's say something, God forbid, happens similar to COVID where you're not able to get you know, supplies in or out of the U.S. as efficient or seamless as we were before, what are you going to do to generate sales? And when people are thinking about going strictly into entrepreneurship, quitting their nine to fives and working strictly for their business, these are conversations that you want to have with the business partner if you have one. And these are definitely ideas that you want to tour around with yourself, you know, jotting down some of these questions to make sure that your business is always afloat. Now, of course, there's always going to be, um, you know, some some different uh obstacles that may arise in your business that you didn't think about, but it's very important and wise, in my opinion, to consider all elements. So if, if I'm not able to sell bundles this month, what else can I sell? If I'm not able to get products this month, what else can I sell? You want to make sure that you're thinking about ways to continue to, to keep the momentum with your business, continue to engage with your current clients and, and customers, and also ways that you can generate money without necessarily having to have a product. So services, uh, if you are doing well with selling your hair extensions, like I mentioned in the beginning of this this video, the email that I received was from an entrepreneur that's doing well with hair sales, right? She just wants to increase her revenue, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's very smart. Take what you've learned that has helped you succeed at selling hair and turn that into an ebook. Uh, create a blog and add ads onto your blog. Uh, do different 
webinars. You don't necessarily have to be live. I'm saying this because I have some people that say, hey, I want to do a webinar. I want to do um, different video content, but I don't want it to be live. I freeze up. Well, you don't have to have it live. You can create a video. You can create a webinar. You can create any type of training video or any, you know, just be creative and you can film that, edit it, and you can resell it. You know, people are always wanting to, to get more insight and to figure out new ways to achieve uh, their definition of success. People are also interested in knowing, myself included, about people's journey. You know, it's very intriguing for me to hear about different entrepreneurs and what they go through and how they overcome. That's one of the reasons that I created my podcast, the Brittany Bundles podcast, so that I would have an opportunity to not only share my experiences, but to also be able to learn more about others' experiences, what we shared on our entrepreneurial journey, what was different, how I overcame an obstacle, how they overcame an obstacle, um, different takeaways that I learned from certain situations and different takeaways that they learned from certain situations. So you can learn a lot by speaking with other people and sharing experiences. If you're like me and a lot of other people and you're interested in hearing about um, different entrepreneurs' journeys, be sure to check out the Brittany Bundles podcast. I have a playlist here on YouTube and then I also will link the link to the podcast um, below this video so you can check that out. But yeah, don't be afraid to share your experiences. <laughs> what worked well for one person may not work well for another. And I'm saying that to say there are some people that come to me too and they're like, well, hey, I haven't heard anyone say they did it this way, but this is honestly what worked for me. Okay, share that. You know what I mean? Like there's no right or wrong way to run your business as long as it's legal. You know what I mean? Like as long as it's ethical, do what works best for you. And in doing that and sharing your experiences, it is going to help someone. Okay. Cool part about doing that is you really don't know who you're helping. There are some videos that I have listened to and I click the like button. And when I started listening to the video, it's like whatever they were saying, I needed to hear that right then and there. So, um, I would look into that as well. If you're doing well with your business, go ahead and look into creating some type of training material, some type of how-to material so that uh, you can create another income stream for yourself, but then also so that you can bring in another audience or you can bring in more income from your existing audience. Um, because if people are purchasing hair, there may be some people that buy from you that are interested in starting their hair business. There may be some people that buy hair from you that has have never thought about starting a hair business, but when you drop your training or your informative information, they may become interested. You may plant a seed of interest and they may want to go ahead and purchase. So that is something to consider. Always look into see what type of services you can add to your business as well. And I have videos going in, into further detail um, about adding services as well in my business playlist if you're interested. Um, the next point that I have is depending on the amount of inventory you have or can get, consider selling in bulk for a larger profit and doing a drop shipping option. So if you're already selling hair extensions and it's going well for you, I would consider offering different options. People love options, right? So there are some people that purchase hair from you that may be purchasing because they have a lot of clients and their clients um, come to them and expect them to have hair on hand. Maybe they're purchasing from you. I know when I had my salon, there would be some stylist that would offer um, extensions with the style. And then we also were in this um, plaza where beauty supply store is at the very end. So sometimes clients would arrive and it would be easy for them to go right a, you know, a couple doors down to the beauty supply store and get the hair that they were interested in and using like, you know, different kind of braiding hair and things like that. Um, so it is important to consider selling in bulk, um, just because you don't know what people are purchasing for. Also, before I, um, started selling hair, uh, seriously, I was also looking at purchasing hair in bulk because I would have bundles in very frequently. And I was like, wow, I can get a discount if I purchase in bulk versus purchasing every, you know, so often. Um, and so I did that too. And so there are some people that are not in business for hair, but they would enjoy purchasing in bulk um, so that they can save money. So I would offer that option to selling more bundles, get more of your hair sold faster, um, giving people an option, and then also looking at drop shipping. If you do offer um, wholesale and drop shipping and you pair that with your how-to videos or your how-to content, that's another way to generate more income for you too. So I would consider offering different options. Before you do wholesale, be sure to set a wholesale minimum 
because some people have started selling wholesale and they've come to me and say, hey, I actually lost money doing this. Um, you want to make sure that you're setting a wholesale minimum so that it makes sense for you on a profit end as well. Um, yes, when customers buy in bulk, they should be getting a better rate, but they should also have, in my opinion, to purchase a, a bigger quantity because what's the point of not having a quantity limit for wholesale? And if they can purchase a wholesale bundle for $39 and then, you know, you have your standard bundles for $79 as an example, you know, or starting at $79 as an example, the wholesale, wholesale starting at $39 as an example, what's the incentive? But if you say, hey, for wholesale, you need to at least purchase 10 of these, you know, in order to qualify for the rate, then that's going to put some kind of cushion there so that you're not losing drastically. And then, like I said, people love options. So then you'll start to bring in another audience um, and then also have some of the audience or clients that are currently purchasing from you interested in expanding. If you're offering different options that tailor to what they're interested in, that's offering, that's opening another, another stream. So I would consider doing that if you have not already. That's something that I've done with my business and it works really well well. Um, another thing that I want to point out is partner with affiliate companies that align with your company. So partnering with hair care companies, heating tools, edge control, etc. I went over a little bit ago how you can look into different white label companies if you want to create or sell your own um, company specific um, shampoos, conditioners, even edge controls and things like that. But also another way to generate money within your business is brand partnerships and affiliate offers. I, I talk about that very frequently in my videos because it's so important. So many people overlook these opportunities. To this day, I still get paid and income through different brand deals and affiliate offers. It is a great way to keep momentum with your business and to keep income flowing, even when you're not necessarily selling your products or working on a service. Um, I mean, you can kind of look at brand deals and um, partnerships as a service, but is something that you can, um, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a way to open up passive income, in my opinion. Now, not all sponsorships will be passive. Some of them, you may actually have to do certain um, things to get paid, like, you know, make a certain video, make a certain amount of videos or make a certain amount of posts. Um, but a lot of, a lot of different uh, partnerships, they give you the option to be creative and, and relate and connect to your audience as you see fit. And then they give you a personalized link and whoever clicks on the link and signs up or purchases, you receive, typically this is how it works, you receive some kind of revenue for that, some commission. So I would look into partnering with different companies. If you're already doing well selling your hair, um, I would go ahead and look at some different um hair care companies or hair care affiliate offers um, or different sponsors. And I would go ahead and reach out to them. Uh, it's really important that you reach out to different companies and sell yourself just as much as companies are reaching out to you, selling their products. You want to make sure that you are um, positioning yourself in a way where you can get as many opportunities that benefit you and your client base as possible. So that would be another recommendation. If you do want me to do a video on different tips on how to position yourself or how to reach out to different companies uh, for different brand partnerships and sponsor offers and affiliate opportunities, be sure to leave a comment down below. I've created some videos about that on this channel already in my business playlist, but I'll be more than happy to go in further detail if you're interested. And the last point that I wanted to point out in this video is add different types of extensions such as clip-ins, braiding hair, different textures, wigs, etc. So with this company, Company. Um, she's offering bundles, frontals, closures, and she has a few different wigs. Um, she's not offering braiding hair um, or a lot of different textures or anything like that. Now, just my personal opinion, I'm I, I don't offer a lot of textures with my hair business. I don't I don't think you have to. I did a video, uh, hair business video, a few weeks ago or maybe a month ago at this point, going over the fact that you don't necessarily need a lot of textures in order to sell hair or be successful in your hair business. But if you are at the point where you're like, look, I'm already doing well with what I have, what else do you recommend I do? I would say consider adding different types of extensions. So um, adding clip-ins uh, or maybe even doing a poll first before you start adding different type of extensions and seeing what your customers may be interested in. 
Some may be interested in clip-ins. Some may be interested in different braiding hair. Some may be interested in different textures. So kind of do a poll. Be interactive with your client base. Um, be interactive with the people that support your business and figure out what they are, are wanting more of. And that will give you an idea of what you can add to your business so that everyone's benefiting. You know, it's, there's a mutual benefit there. And you're not adding something that is going to just sit on your website and you know, not really have any traffic or attention. So I would do that. Um, you can reach out and create different polls now on Instagram. If you have your email mailing list and you're, um, you actually have people that signed up, I would go ahead and send out an email newsletter asking different questions and asking them to reply back to the email. Um, you could do like a survey. Um, there's different websites out there. Uh, I believe Survey Monkey is one. I haven't done a survey in a while. Um, no, actually, the last survey I did was on YouTube in my community tab, but it wasn't in regard to my hair business or anything like that. But it's been a while since I've done any surveys for my hair business. So, I mean, there's different emails out there, different um, websites you can go to to create your own survey. But get creative and, and figure out a way to see what your client base is wanting more of. Um, and, and that would be a good way to kind of gauge what you may want to you know, add and, and, and what you may want to remove. Honestly, if you do another poll and ask them, hey, how are you enjoying this? You may find that some people aren't enjoying certain textures that you have and certain people, you know, are, you know, just kind of getting a gauge for where you sit at and how others are viewing your, your products. So I really hope that this video helped. If you have any additional questions, be sure to go to either one of my websites. You can go to badchickhair.com, which is linked down below and leave a chat or submit a forum. You can also go to keepingupwithbrittany.com. All the way at the bottom of that page is a forum where you can put in your name, email address, and your question. You can also follow me on any of my social media platforms. Those are down below. I do want to thank you for tuning in and I will talk to you all in the next video. Bye.